Hi, I thought I'd show you a quick video of my latest engine for Fenlin Pit. This is a British electric vehicle, a um, little electric 040. They were meant for uh, underground work mostly, but uh, ended up being used as plant on a lot of little, little railways. The uh, battery box is rather large and square and sits on the top and there was a, uh, a motor between the frames which powered the, uh, the wheels. The, uh, the back half of the footplate could actually be folded up so that the, uh, my, the, the, the locomotive could be lowered down a mine shaft. And the, uh, the wheelbase is at two feet, is actually identical to the gauge, so it really is as wide as it is long. I 3D printed this locomotive and here are some of the parts from a previous uh, test version. So the, uh, the frames are, are one complete part and uh, in the middle of the frames an N20 motor uh, can sit and that then drives the rear axle via some bevel gears. Um, the N20 motors are very cheap and cheerful um, but uh, uh, seem to do the job okay. Uh, I started off trying to use a 100 to 1 version uh, but that really was uh, too slow uh, so I've ended up using the uh, not 100 to 100 RPM version. Um, I've now switched to using the 300 RPM version which makes it a little bit more uh, speedy. Um, I was actually waiting on some gears um, to come uh, they were on a slow boat from China, but uh, I lost patience, so I actually tried 3D printing my own, which I didn't think would work, but uh, they do actually drive, and at least as a proof of concept, uh, I've managed to make it work. Um, in the middle there, there's also uh, a eighth inch bit of tube that I, again, 3D printed, um, because the locomotive has split axles. Uh, you can also see one of the uh, one of the coupling rods. Um, I 3D printed those. I've I've bushed the holes in the ends with uh, a little bit of brass tube. Turning the loco on its back, you can see the bevel gears and really simple drive. Um, the axles are in some high level uh, horn blocks which just stuck into the uh, 3D printed frames. Uh, you can also see there the little muffs for the, uh, where, the where the axle has been sawn in half to make it electrically um, isolated and then joined together with a, a little plastic uh, part. Um, the wires which have the job of holding in the Horn blocks uh, actually also double up with the current collection uh, going back up to the motor. The wheels themselves are Allen Gibson Lomac wheels. Um, obviously they don't have a crank pin. Um, so what I've done, given that the wheels are being O-gauge, are actually quite thin for 16mm narrow gauge, um, I've 3D printed an overlay which has been stuck uh, onto the front of the wheel the crank pin then attaches to this. Uh, at the moment there's just a little bit of green wire insulation. I haven't yet put the uh, crank pin nut on proper. Um, the crank pin nut actually gets covered with a, a rather natty little uh, bush. That's, you can see the little round part there. Uh, they get stuck on the top uh, once we've uh, made ourselves completely happy with it. The man was also 3D printed. You're trying to find 16mm scale figures that aren't rather cartoonish is always a bit difficult. Uh, and particularly when you're trying to squeeze them into a particular pose uh, to fit into rather a small locomotive. So it was rather important that uh, this particular gentleman was quite hunched up and had his legs together. Um, what I've managed to do is use a piece of public domain software called Make Human, uh, which can generate uh, human figures 
um, these can be imported into Blender uh, and then the rigging of those figures can be posed uh, to match the uh, the 3D model of the uh, of the locomotive. Uh, so he was able to be specifically designed to to sit in this loco. So there we go, another loco for Venom Pit. Hope you like that and thanks for watching.